Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Ghostly Tales for Ghastly Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called The Ghost of Christmas Turkey's Past. Jack loved turkey more than anything else in the world. Roast, boiled, braised, rolled, plump, thumped, trussed and even frozen. He couldn't get enough. The only thing he didn't like was people telling him that if he only ever ate turkey, then one day he was sure to turn into one. He didn't believe it was possible. Turkeys, he would say, have a brain the size of a pea. My brain is the size of the bee day in my mummy's bathroom, so it wouldn't fit into a turkey's head. I'd be the only turkey in the shop with a set of gold taps and a bee day fountain sticking out between my ears. I'd look stupid. Be that as it may, Jack was a turkey freak. <laughs> When his mother went shopping, he would tag along to check that she hadn't forgotten what he liked best. If she dared to dither at any shelf, he would quietly prod her in the ribs with a wishing bone that he carried for this express purpose, and whisper confidentially, lest any other customer should overhear him and steal the last one. Turkeys, let's go! He had once caught his mother trying to sneak a large chicken into her trolley, pretending that it was a turkey, but he wasn't fooled. When he pointed out that the label quite clearly said, Large Chicken, don't be fooled into thinking that this is a turkey, his mother had gone as red as a can of tomatoes and had hurriedly put the chicken back. Turkey connoisseurs, you see, have a parson's nose for the real thing, and nothing but genuine turkey will do. As a result, Jack's family ate turkey morning, noon and night. Turkey burgers on a slice for breakfast, drumsticks at lunch, sandwiches at tea, and anything left lurking on the carcass for dinner. Jack's appetite was rapacious. Ten minutes before any meal, he would bang his knife and fork on the table and switch into hooligan mode. Turkey! Ra ra ra! Turkey! Ra ra ra! Turkey! He would chant, much to his parents' annoyance. When the food was served, he would bury his face in his plate and snuffle and grunt away like a pig in truffles. Before anyone else had finished, he would hold up his plate and shout, More! at the top of his voice. Generally, he got it. At night, Jack would go to bed with a smile on his face and dream the dreams of a carnivore. Squadrons of juicy, plump turkeys carrying banners proclaiming, This turkey belongs to Jack, would swoop out of the sky in glorious technicolour, land in his back garden, pluck out all of their own feathers, open the door to Jack's oven, and climb in of their own accord. I bet you can guess where Jack went on his summer holidays every year. Well, you're right, of course. Greece. You didn't think it was Turkey, did you? Greece, where the biggest turkeys in Europe live. And I bet you can guess what his favourite time of the year was. Well, it had to be, didn't it? Christmas, when there were more turkeys in the shops than even Jack could eat. He used to sit outside his local butcher's window, gaze fondly at the rows and rows of hairless birds, and write letters to Father Christmas, explaining that he didn't want a bike, and he didn't want a gun, and he didn't want a train set, but he would love a turkey. Jack's father used to write letters to Father Christmas as well. They always said the same thing. Dear Santa, Mum likes turkey, I like turkey, and I dare say that even you like turkey. But not every day of the year. What can we do about Jack? Please help. Love his concerned father. One year, on Christmas Eve, Jack was more excited than usual. His mother had bought the biggest turkey he had ever seen for Christmas dinner. It was bigger even than Jack 
and had been delivered to the door by three butcher's boys and a forklift truck. Jack sat staring at this delicious-looking beast while his father prepared the stuffing. Yum, yum, he said as he licked his lips and imagined all those gorgeous smells that went with roast turkey. He closed his eyes, rubbed his tummy and fell backwards off his chair. At nine o'clock, he was prized away from the dead bird and sent upstairs to bed. He hung a pillowcase over the mantelpiece for Father Christmas and snuggled down to dream of giant turkeys and drumsticks the size of baseball bats. Jack's father, on the other hand, put on a pair of woolly socks, a thick scarf and a pink bobble hat. He fetched the long ladder from the garage and carried it next door to where the Ramsbottoms lived. Do you think I could sit on your roof for a bit? He asked a bewildered Mrs. Ramsbottom. Well, if you must, she replied. Then she added, Well, if you don't think I'm rude, may I ask why? What's wrong with your own roof? Well, I might wait Jack, said Jack's father mysteriously. Oh, said Mrs. Ramsbottom. Then she smiled a pitying sort of smile, the sort you give to someone you think might be a bit soft in the head. Help yourself, she said, and she shut the front door. Jack's father cut an extraordinary picture against the snow-covered roofs as he clambered up the ladder. His breath poured out of his mouth like thick white smoke. He slid across the icy slates, pulled himself up on the television aerial, sat down with his back against the chimney pot, and waited. When he heard the jangling of the sleigh bells two hours later, his bottom was frozen solid, and his blue fingers looked like a fistful of curacao flavoured ice pops. Over here! he shouted, staggering to his feet and waving his arms above his head. Stop! Father Christmas got the shock of his life when this strange apparition leapt up in front of his sleigh. He pulled sharply on the reins and crash-landed his reindeer into the soft snow on the top of the ramp bottom roof. There were toys and presents everywhere. They shot forward over Father Christmas's head and landed in a chaotic heap in front of Jack's father. Yo ho ho, said Father Christmas, very funny. Are you trying to kill me or something? Sorry, said Jack's father. I didn't know how else to attract your attention. Well, try phoning next time, replied the man with the long white beard. I thought you were a ghost. Jack's father felt very foolish. He knew how busy Father Christmas was, and he hadn't meant to cause him any trouble. Now the extra work involved in picking up the spilled presents was making Father Christmas all hot and bothered. Well, come on then. What do you want? I've got work to do, he shouted. I know it sounds silly, but how can I stop Jack from eating so much turkey? Oh, said Father Christmas, feeling in his pocket for a small piece of paper. It was a note. You must be Jack's father. Still likes his turkey, does he? Jack's father nodded. Well, I'll see what I can do, said Father Christmas. I'll arrange a little surprise for Jack tonight. It should do the trick. And put him off turkey for good. Well, I certainly hope not, said Father Christmas. Well, what do you mean, snorted Jack's father. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, gave him a funny look. Well, I, I happen to be partial to a lovely bit of turkey myself, Father Christmas announced. I wouldn't want to put Jack off such delicious food for good. I'll just give him a fright. Slow him down a bit. He'll still eat turkey, but not quite so often. Now, give us a hand with this tricycle, will you? Then the two men loaded up the sleigh, and Father Christmas twinkled off into the night. As he went... He let a shower of magic dust slip from a pouch on his belt. It floated downwards through the clouds and passed straight through the frosted glass pane of Jack's bedroom window. Jack was fast asleep. As he dreamt sweet dreams about twelve plump turkeys pulling Santa's sleigh across a golden moon, the window in his room swung open. A freezing cold wind filled the curtains and blew them towards Jack's bed. They brushed against his cheek and tickled the backs of his ears until he woke up with a start. 
Who, who's there? He said sleepily, rubbing his eyes. Apparently no one, just the wind gently fanning the curtains. Jack would have gone back to sleep had not at that precise moment the most extraordinary thing happened. A cluster of stars fell out of the night sky. They twisted and turned as they dropped towards the earth, but as they drew level with Jack's bedroom window, they stopped. They formed themselves into the shape of an arrow and shot into the centre of the room. Jack's tongue was hanging out of the front of his mouth as the stars melted away to leave in their stead a huge, bald turkey. Good evening, Jack, said the turkey. Wow, was all that Jack could muster. Then he said, what happened to your leg? Well, it got cut off, replied the huge, bald, one-legged turkey. How, said Jack, who was fascinated. Well, come with me and I'll show you, said the turkey, taking Jack's hand with one of his wings. Oh, by the way, I'm the ghost of Christmas turkey's past. Hi, I'm Jack, said Jack and they flew out of the window, with Jack clinging on for dear life. Jack had never flown with the turkey before. To be honest, the turkey was good, but not that good. When they flew over water, Jack's toes got wet. After a brief plunge through a small forest, Jack re-emerged with some most uncomfortable branches sticking out of his pyjamas. And in one hair-raising incident, which involved trying to fly over the top of the mountain, they actually had to land and walk the last bit because the turkey was so pooped. Still, a flight with a one-legged turkey is better than no flight at all. We're here, announced the ghost of Christmas turkeys past finally. Hold on! He let go of Jack, who fell like a stone towards the grey earth beneath him. Jack screamed. He was sure he was going to die, but miraculously his fall was broken by a huge pile of feathers. The turkey landed on his belly and hopped over to join him. Well, what do you think of it? said the ghost of Christmas turkeys past. What? replied Jack. This graveyard, said the turkey. This is where the remains of every Christmas dinner for the last 150 years is buried. Jack was impressed. That was a lot of turkeys. I've never thought about what actually happens to the turkeys once I've eaten them, he said. No, no one ever does. But turkeys have got souls just the same as you. Those souls have got to be laid to rest somewhere. And so they come here. Not all of us, replied the ghost of Christmas turkeys past, pointing to a large concrete building in the distance. A flag was flying at half-mask on the roof. It read, Home for retired war veterans. Several old turkeys were sitting on the terrace in bath chairs. They were wrapped up in tartan blankets. Well, is that where you live? said Jack. In that old turkey's home? The ghost nodded. Some of us are unlucky. People start to eat us, but their eyes are too big for their stomachs. They take one bite and leave the rest. Well, is that how you lost your leg? inquired Jack. Precisely, said the old turkey. A little girl took a shine to it, so her father hacked it off. Then she had the audacity to feed it to the dog. Oh, that's awful, said Jack. Yes, said the one-legged turkey. There was one consolation, though. The dog choked to death on the bone. Suddenly, a loud beating of wings filled the air. Jack looked up and was surprised to see that the sky had turned black. There were hundreds and hundreds of turkeys flying overhead, and each of them was carrying a bundle in its beak. The ghost of Christmas turkeys passed, sighed and shook his head. That'll be the first of the Christmas delivery, he said sadly. On a signal from their leader, the turkeys opened their beaks and scattered their bundles over the graveyard. It rained dead turkey bones for 20 minutes. Jack and the ghost of Christmas turkeys passed stood in the middle of the downpour without saying a word. When the last bone had come to rest at their feet, the turkey said, Now, Jack, after all that you've seen, do you still want to eat turkey meat for Christmas dinner? Jack thought for a minute. Well, I'm afraid I do, 
He said, "'Cause I love it." The ghost of Christmas turkeys past scooped Jack up under his wing and took off into the sky. As they flew along, Jack asked where they were going, but the turkeys said nothing. He was map reading and required all his concentration to work out where he was. They landed in a farmyard and were met by another turkey. He looked younger than the ghost of Christmas turkeys past, wore a thin moustache on his top beak, carried a swagger cane and had two legs. All right, Christmas past, stand down, said the younger. Leave him to me now. Jack turned to thank his one-legged friend, but he had gone. Eyes right, shouted the new turkey. To the hen house. Quick march. Jack was marched off before he could complain and very soon found himself being pushed through a small wooden door into a long, white, brightly lit hut. Prisoner! Halt! screamed the new turkey. But I'm not a prisoner, exclaimed Jack. Silence in the ranks, came the reply. I am the ghost of Christmas turkey's present. You will listen to what I have to say. I will only say it once, so you better sharpen up your lug holes and pay attention. Understood? Jack was about to say no when the ghost of Christmas turkey's present interrupted again. Good! Then hear this. Take a look around you. What do you see? Turkeys, said Jack. Correct. Thousands of them all squashed together. What, what are they doing here? Waiting for the butcher's van. What do you think they're doing here? Having a party? The ghost of Christmas turkey's present pushed the wobbly red bit on the top of his beak into Jack's face. Grow up, laddie. He barked unpleasantly. But, but they're all in little cages, said Jack and they're sitting on top of each other. And they haven't even been introduced properly. I know, it's terrible. Jack was feeling a little queasy. Isn't it a bit unfair, keeping them locked up here day and night? He asked. Ah, oh, yes, but it wouldn't be Christmas without turkey, sneered the ghost of Christmas turkey's present, frog marching Jack back outside into the farmyard. He called Jack to attention and fixed him with a beady stare. Seen enough yet, turkey eater? He snarled. Still fancy a succulent bit of juicy leg for your Christmas dinner, do you? Oh dear, said Jack. You're going to hate me for this, I know, but, but yes. Because whatever you say, whatever you show me, I do so love turkey. Steam whistled out of the ears of the ghost of Christmas turkeys present. You, he said, have asked for this. Then he turned half a step to his left and bellowed in his most frightening voice, Ghost of Christmas turkeys future! One step forward! Out from under the shadows of the hen house stepped the largest turkey you have ever seen. 140 pounds of pure muscle. He was wearing a pair of bright green trousers, Doc Martens, a silk shirt, and the coolest shades you ever saw. And he had a gold ring through his beak. I am the turkey of the future, said this hip-hop ghost. Stick with me, brother, and I will show you what's going down. He slapped Jack's hands with his wings. Give me five, let's fly. They soared over the countryside at a thousand miles an hour. Cities flashed past in a trice. Mountains shrank to molehills as they climbed high into the Earth's atmosphere and circled the globe four times in as many seconds. Jack was so scared he couldn't even scream. They raced submarines along the seabed, hitched a lift from Concord, and nearly crashed into Father Christmas, coming far too fast round the corner of Australia. Jack was surprised to find himself back outside his parents' house when they landed. You've brought me home, he said. The ghost of Christmas Turkey's future slapped his thigh and roared with laughter. Man, this ain't your home. This is your house. But it ain't your home. We're like, one hundred years in the future. This is what Christmas Day's gonna be like in the year 2090. 
Take a look, man. Take a look. Jack climbed up on the window ledge and peered in through the net curtains. He could see a Christmas tree with fairy lights on it in the corner of the room. There was holly around the pictures and a piece of mistletoe hung over the door. The table was set for Christmas dinner with red napkins, crackers and party hats. The room looked exactly as it had done when Jack went up to bed on Christmas Eve after watching his father stuff the turkey. But I don't see what's different, said Jack. Oh, you will, you will, said the ghost of Christmas turkey's future, clucking with glee. Suddenly, the kitchen door opened. Jack was expecting to see his mother, so he imagined his surprise when a large turkey wearing an apron and carrying a silver platter with a lid on it backed into the room. Come along, children, she shouted. Christmas dinner is ready. Three little turkeys rushed into the room, screaming with delight. They were just like Jack, pushing and shoving each other to be first at the food. Sit down and behave, said their mother. Now then, dear, will you carve? She was addressing the largest turkey of them all, who had just come in from the garage, obviously the father. Jack was feeling sick again. Even if it was the year 2090, it didn't seem right that turkeys were eating other turkeys for Christmas dinner. But then, they weren't. As the father lifted the lid off the silver platter and sharpened his carving knife, Jack screamed. They were eating him! The turkeys were eating Jack for Christmas dinner! Then Jack woke up in bed, screaming. It was Christmas Day, but Jack did not eat turkey for dinner. He took one look at the huge beast that his mother had cooked for him and ate sprouts and roast potatoes instead. But I thought you liked turkey, said his father with a smile on his face. Uh, not today, said Jack. Maybe tomorrow. Jack's father tucked in his napkin, picked up his knife and fork, and sent up a silent thank you to Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>a little Christmas sing-song. You must remember this one. Jingle bells, teacher smells, I wish she go away. She looks just like an elephant, I've nothing more to say. Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas, you audible little gruesome kids. Ho, ho, ho!